All right, in this lecture, we're going to continue with our uh, introduction to Unix, basic Unix commands. Uh, this time, we're going to learn about commands that have to do with uh, processes, how to check in on processes, kill processes, uh, and perform other actions uh, related to processes or jobs, which are basically commands that we're running on the computer or that uh, the system is running kind of in the background without our knowledge. The most important of these is definitely a process status. Uh, PS command. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of options for, for this command uh, and probably the easiest thing to do is just to go ahead and pull it up real quick uh, if we type PS. Uh, the default is to display the, the processes associated uh, that are being run in this in this particular uh, shell. We can also uh, issue the command PS-U and give our username and it'll issue the uh, process status for the processes that uh, are related to the user. So uh, the processes are listed by the processor ID, the PID. Okay. The PID will become very useful here in a minute when we uh, learn how to kill those jobs uh, associated with their PID, processor ID. Uh, if we go back you can see there there's also a uh, PPID. This is the parent processor ID. So sometimes there can be many processes that share the same parent process. Uh, for instance, if we're running many instances of Bash uh, shell, then uh, maybe we want to kill all of them at once. They all would share the same parent processor ID and we could kill them or stop them from running uh, based on this PPID. And to take a look at this PPID, we need to issue the command uh, PSAUX and uh, over here in the second column, uh, the second group of long numbers or rather, uh, is where you'd see the parent processor ID. So I'd re I'm going to reference you to the man page for processor, um, rather for PS, because uh, different versions, whether it's a BSD version of Unix or, or a POSIX version of Unix, uh, the, the commands are not always the same, so I'm going to go ahead and reference you to those for the full listing of all the commands. Another important or useful command uh, on Unix machines is top. This tells us uh, the top processes are running at any given time. So if, um, actually for some reason on Shamu, which I'm sitting on now, uh, top does not r work properly. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what this uh, unknown argument is about. But uh, if it, I think it has something to do with the version of Linux or the, the uh, architecture we're using here. But uh, if, if we go over to uh, my Mac, uh, this is so that here we're running locally on my Mac, uh, Lagrange, then if we type top, then it gives us a listing uh, based on, or sorted on, uh, based on CPU percentage. Uh, and uh, there's other options, many options to top. Uh, you hit Q to quit top, by the way. And uh, there's many other options to top that uh, basically you can decide how they're sorted in a different manner. Uh, the default is to sort them by the CPU usage. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, those processor IDs can be useful if we'd like to kill uh, some of those commands. So um, if we uh, start a command, say uh, X logo, and we run it in the background, uh, it actually tells us what the processor ID is. Um, by the way, you can see the X logo here. Um, it, it actually shows us what the uh, PID there is, and in this case it's 1120. So we, I can actually kill that by just typing kill 1120. And you can see it's gone. We can actually kill many, many processes. So uh, if I start, I say, X logo and run it in the background, and then I start X eyes and run it in the background and uh, bring those down so you can see them. So there's the eyes, uh, there's logo, and then I can kill them with uh, one command here by typing in both of their PIDs. So occasionally um, you can see that uh, by default kill uses something called sig term signal. And certain processes ignore sig term, 
and uh, so you have to set, send it something stronger and so in this case if kill doesn't work you should try to send it the sig kill signal which is uh, a meaner or a harder version of kill and uh, both of these two commands right here will produce uh, that sig kill signal okay you can also uh, for certain commands or processes you can kill them based on their name and with that we'd use the kill all command so once again if I start XI's and run it in the background bring them down so you can show you oops um, bring them out so I can show you then I can actually kill all 1138 I'm sorry kill all X eyes and it will kill that so that's another way to kill it uh, that works occasionally so we've already seen this uh, quite a bit in the class already but we can run process in the background by uh, using the ampersand at, uh, on on the end of the command so I've actually been doing that here with X eyes and X logo can run that in the background um, on a bash shell which we're using here uh, and we've been using throughout the class it, this is the default uh, on Shamu uh, when you run it in the background th these background commands will actually survive a, a logout by the user but that's not true of all, all shells uh, particularly the born shell and the corn shell um, if you ever find yourself into a machine that uses that you actually have to use uh, a different command called uh, no up so no up is a command which stands for uh, no hang up which would spawn a background command that would survive a user logging out uh, note that you still have to append the ampersand to the end of the command Another uh, useful way to control processes is, is actually the at command. So with at, we can actually uh, tell a process when to run. And uh, let me just go back to the, this, and we'll go through. Uh, the command to be run will be run at the at, at prompt. So if we type at and a time, uh, the time can be absolute. The default is to use 24-hour time. Um, we can also specify AM, PM. We can specify names like noon or midnight. Um, we can specify now uh, plus some some time. So now plus one minute plus one hour. Tomorrow um, out now plus one week. Uh, and finally, when you run at unless uh, the output is redirected, uh, the output will automatically be mailed to the user. Um, so it's more, it's really more useful to uh, redirect the output. So let's just go ahead and show an example of that. Uh, let's say uh, if I run at now plus one minute. Okay. When I when I go ahead and run that, uh, it's going to give me an at prompt, and this is where I would type in a prompt. We'll say date. And I'm going to redirect the output. Well, let's say, let's not say date. Let's say host name. And I'll redirect, redirect the output to uh, host dot out. And then hit Control D to get out of there. Uh, and let's see. Just give it a few more seconds here, and we should see the output so while we're waiting on that I'll go ahead and point out that uh, batch is similar to at it's a uh, batch commands are not uh, are, they're, they're executed as soon as the system load permits so this uh, you can execute many commands and they won't compete for system time uh, they'll basically be executed one after another of course in this class later on when we're using Shamu we're going to learn uh, to use a, a proper queue to submit parallel jobs so uh, this batch command would be more useful on your local Unix machine so let's see uh, so there's our host.out file it ran finally 
Uh, and if we take a look at what's in it, uh, it is the host name. So uh, that's the at command. And uh, these are, this is a concludes the lecture here on uh, commands that have to do with, useful commands that have to do with processes.